Everything in creation, all of nature exists in a delicate balance. A trophic cascade is an ecological phenomenon that starts at the top of the food chain and falls to the bottom. What happens when you remove the apex predator from its environment? The most famous example of a trophic cascade is the wolves in Yellowstone National Park. In the 1920s, humans killed the last gray wolves in Yellowstone and they remained extinct for 70 years. In 1995, the wolves were reintroduced. Being the apex predator, scientists knew of the wolves' ability to hunt and kill certain species. However, they didn't know of the wolves' capacity to bring life and balance the ecosystem. In the absence of the wolves with no one to hunt them, the number of elk built up to extremely high levels, and the high population of elk reduced much of the vegetation in the park. However, as soon as the wolves returned, everything changed. The wolves changed the behavior of the elk. The elk started to avoid certain parts of the park where they could be trapped, such as the valley and the gorges. Immediately, the vegetation in those places started to regenerate. The empty valley sides became forests of cottonwood, willow, and aspen. After that, many animal species returned. The wolves' impact was far-reaching. The regenerating forest brought back beavers, who operate as ecosystem engineers. They cut down trees to create dams, and those dams provide habitats for many other animal species. Most astonishingly, the wolves changed the behavior of the rivers. The regenerating forests lessened the erosion and stabilized the banks of the rivers so that they collapsed less often and were more fixed in their course. The return of the wolves transformed not just the ecosystem, but its physical geography. The Holy Quran says the human being is made to be God's Khalifa. Khalifa means one who stands in the place of another as a successor. So man being made in the image and likeness of God has the capacity to reflect him. We are the stewards of the earth. However, the only way for man to reflect God and act as his successor is to walk in his footsteps, reproduce his behaviors and actions. But what have our actions produced? Let's take a trip to Baltimore and see what my brother Elijah Miles has to say. Yeah, yeah. Jump from Baltimore, you say you was, I never see you What part you on? I got some family on the Alameda I love my city, ass yes, about me and I bet they know I don't fumble, was raised in the gutter, I love the jungle I ain't never had shit, but a dream, now I see them Someone go and tell the DJ they should bring this back Someone go and tell the DJ they should bring this back I love my city, ass yes, about me and I bet they know I love my city, ass yes, about me and I bet they know Alright, so we know from Trophy Cascades that when you remove the dominant life form from an ecosystem, the whole thing falls out of balance. That's right. So how do you think that applies to um, us, our human condition, and specifically black people in America? Mm, I think it's evident. Um, because when you really look at the environment that we live in, America, like America contributes the biggest carbon footprint of any nation in the world. Right. But yet, it was like, like, like we said, uh, it's the only one that didn't sign the agreement, that's uh, the Paris Agreement about uh, admitting that global warming even exists. Right. And so, when it comes to America as a nation, you see that uh, it contributes, or this country contributes the most pollution, the most environmental disaster, is the most arrogant, have done the most heinous crimes across the world. And so when it, when it relates to black people that are within the belly of the beef, within America, it says to me that we gotta step up and take back the environment so that we can not only save ourselves, but save the whole world. Yeah, and I think that's the critical point that we have to take control because yeah. uh, no one else is gonna change our condition but us. That's right. So when the ecosystem fell apart, when the wolves left, there was, um, there was nothing else to, to manage it, to stabilize mm -hmm. it, to maintain it. So we as stewards of the earth, as uh, Allah's Khalifa, we have to step up our uh, our contribution we have to take our rightful place as the head as in control and and change our own reality that's right and, and, and when it comes to control like you were saying it's the first thing we gotta get in control of is of ourselves because we allow other people groups we are free people quote unquote but we allow other people groups to control everything that has to do with us they control our education they control our food supply they control our water supply they control our, our economic resources and so we got to step up and, and not only take control of, of the world, but the first step is you got to take control of yourself. Exactly. You know what I mean? If you can't take control of the education of your children, you, then you dang sure ain't going to be able to take control over the world when the world is being destroyed as it is. And so we got to be able to 
step up and always be on point and and always be waking up early and, and going to sleep late because we behind the I guess they would say behind the eight ball. We gotta like get back in control of ourselves. And we gotta start with education, with health, with all these things. We can't just be saying, you know what I mean, we're gonna take control over the earth, but yet we still go to the hospitals of our former oppressors. You know what I mean? And so we gotta take control of our own very lives. And we gotta admit to ourselves that the lives that we are living are not controlled by us. And once we're able to do that, then we are able to even have a seat at the table. We are able to have a power position to be able to, to, to push certain things forward. Because that's what power is. Power is control. But if they have power or control over the lives, our own lives, the lives of our children, of the, our destiny, where we're headed, then we won't even be able to influence the things that we have to influence worldwide to be able to save the world. So I think it starts, the first step, it starts with taking back control of our lives and our communities. Yeah, I agree. And um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, he taught us that every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God. That's right. But when he was saying that, he really was introducing us to our potential. But like you said, it's stage by stage and step by step that we get there. That's right. So we, um, we have the potential to manifest all the attributes of God, but we got to start by taking care of ourselves, you know, cleaning our lives up. You know, yeah. putting down the lifestyle that we used to live. Once yeah. we receive new information and new knowledge, we change and we evolve for the better. Yeah. So once we're able to take control of ourselves, our own condition, take control of our families, then we can move on to, to working with our neighbors and taking control of our community. And we expand from then on. But I definitely agree that first we start with self. Yeah, and, and, the, and the most, one of the most beautiful things that I ever heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say, what was beautiful to me, was, was about basically that, that the black man and woman when, he, when, when we were doing other things, he was saying that, you know what I mean, that you acted other than yourself. And right. I think that's beautiful to me because it's not, he, he, what, was, what, what he taught us was not what we could be, but he taught us what we could be, but he taught us our nature. You get what I'm right, saying? Exactly. The nature of the basis of us, the essence of us. Exactly. And so when you did other stuff, he'd be like, yo, you need to stop that and you need to, you know what I mean, be yourself. Yeah, return to your own and be yourself. Exactly, yeah. and that goes into what we're saying about Nature and the right. reference to nature and the trophic cascade is that our nature is to reflect God right. and to be the stewards of the earth, to maintain our surroundings. That's our nature, mm -hmm. to reflect God, his attributes, his way of life, his way of civilization. Yeah. But upon um, the colonization of the earth by the Europeans, we've been made other than ourselves. That's right. So they, in the Europeans' colonization of the earth, they have spread their doctrine, their mm -hmm. ideology, and their way of life everywhere. And it's stunk up the planet. That's right. And everybody has adopted their way of life. So now, um, in Africa, you know, mm -hmm. bleaching cream is um, is yeah. one of the top sellers. Right. The um, the notion, the the way of thinking of white supremacy has spread everywhere, and along with that, they spread their way in which they in cohabitate with the earth. Mm -hmm. They uh, they don't live in a natural type of cohesive, right. uh, symbiotic, mutually beneficial relationship right. with the earth. So um, when they first came here to America. The, the natives here didn't understand the notion that they were saying that uh, the notion that they owned the land. The natives, yeah. the natives lived on the land. They worked on the land. They lived with the animals on the land. But they understood that the land was here before them, and the land right. was going to be here after them. Yeah. So they're just a part of nature, a part of yeah. the, the earth as a whole. We live in one biosphere, so we got to come back into balance with nature and uh, assume our, our rightful nature, right. like you said, as being uh, as reflecting God and being that top dominant part of the ecosystem that, that maintains and balances the whole thing. And, and, and it's so true that we've really got to do that because, and it's really a life or death situation. Because as right. you've seen with the hurricanes, it was islands that was here before the hurricanes that are not here no more. You know what I mean? That that are gone, that are underwater. Yeah, That's, that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't coming back. You know what I mean? And, and so we really have to really be ourselves and really reject the, the mindset, the world view, the, the habits, the behaviors of our oppressors because if not, we're all going to perish. We're all going yeah. to perish. And we, if not, we're not going to be here 2,000 years later to talk about, you know what I mean, about the white man, about oppression. Because if we don't step up, we will be gone. You know what I mean? And it won't be anybody else's fault but our own because we have the abilities. We have the, 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 the stuff inside us to rebalance the world. Definitely. 
that's why I really love when Elijah Muhammad say be yourself because if you really, if we are really as a, as a nation, as a people being ourselves, then we won't have to worry about the problems because we'll have the problems in order. We'll keep, keep them down. We'll keep all anybody that's trying to destroy the world, we'll keep them under wraps because we won't even allow them to destroy the world because they won't even have the power or the control to destroy the world. And so you got to just step up. You got to step yeah. up. So uh, another thing that Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us is that he said he's, he's beginning his work with the man, but the majority of his work was with rebuilding the black woman. So how do you think, what do black men need to do to take their rightful position as the head of their household, the head of their family, to really change our condition as a, uh, as a people? Because we know that the basis of a nation is a strong family structure. Right. So what do black men need to do to change the city of Baltimore, to change our condition as a people? Okay, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about women too, but the black, what I feel like the black man has to do, the black man is first obligated to respect the black woman. Because right. a lot of the problems of imbalance that we find in the world is because of the disrespect and the negligence and the abuse of the female principle of the whole universe. And so if we keep pushing that forward, we keep neglecting the female, abusing the female, abusing, but it's, I said the female principle period because neglecting emotions, neglecting the nurturing, you know what I mean? Keep telling your son, you know what I mean? It's not, boys don't cry. You know what I mean? Boys supposed to be strong. The boys, you know what I mean? You can't have emotions, you gotta be bland. That type of abuse of the female principle within ourselves and the outside of ourselves, the female principle, it won't even allow the black woman to even take her rightful place as, 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 as partner with us right. when it comes to remaking this world. So the black man has to respect the black woman. Yeah. has to respect the, the female principle of the universe in order to balance balance things. The second thing we gotta do, man, is we gotta love our children. And we gotta love our people more than life itself because out of that love, we will remake the world by any means necessary. We will remake the world because we, we love our children, we want our children to persist. We love our people, we want our people to be, to have truth, to have to have balance, to have good lives, to have happiness, to have good homes. And so since we want that, we will do anything possible, you know what I mean, to make right. that happen. And so I think we just need to build the love within ourselves and everything else will come natural. Because if you love, if I love you, you don't have to tell me that if somebody come and punch me in my face, you're supposed to have, you're supposed to have my back a lot. You gotta tell me that. Because if I love you, it ain't nothing you can say to me that ain't gonna make me destroy whoever tries to hurt you. That's love. And so when you build that within yourself, for your people, then I don't have to tell you that you gotta get up four in the morning so you can plot and plan so that we can get to push our people forward. You're gonna do it because you love us and you know that we have to persist. So I think at all the base of it is love. And because when you when you really love, you'll do any and everything. You don't have to be told. You know what I mean? Because because I think the reason you need remind is the reason you read a uh, honorable Elijah Muhammad, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The reason you need these people is because us as black people have a self-hate complex and we haven't built up the love with, within ourselves, for ourselves and our people to do the things that it come, that's natural for any people that love themselves to yep. do. And so you need a reminder to say, this is what love looks like, brothers and sisters. This is what I do. And when you ask them why you do it, you say, because I love you. And so it tells you that this is how you're naturally supposed to be. This is how you're naturally supposed to think. You don't have to tell a, a person, a woman that loves their children, you don't have to tell them to protect their children. They're going to protect their children. Right. You know what I mean? And so we got to build up the, we got to push off the self-hate. And we got to put build up the love for ourselves and our people. Every time you look at a black man as a black man, every time I look at another black man, I should be looking at a brother. So it shouldn't yeah. be, it shouldn't be like I'm just calling you brother. I'm looking at a brother, I'm looking at my second self. Every time I look at a black woman, I should be looking at my sister, my mother, my, my, my queen, my, my niece, my mother. I should be looking at her like, and I should be, and, and, and if anybody tries to harm her or hurt her or abuse her, I should be completely against that because of the love. So love is not a feminine thing, it's a very strong thing yeah. and we gotta build it up within ourselves. Yeah, that's a great point. We have a very, very bad misunderstanding of love what it practically is it's not you know it's not an emotion but it's a duty it's a responsibility right. so when you say that you love something and we love our people we truly did and we would take the initiative to act out and handle our responsibility of changing our own condition yeah so that's a great point and um the same thing with uh 
when the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad introduced us to um, our potential, our nature, he uh, also invoked in us a responsibility. Because yeah. with great power comes great responsibility. That's right. So it's on us to to change our condition. If we want to change this great city of Baltimore, it's gonna be it's gonna be you, Elijah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be me. We gotta That's do right. it. That's right. And the only way that we can do it is doing it together. So mm -hmm. let's go. <laughs> The decadent society we live in prompts individualism, selfishness, greed, and corruption. Western society has pushed the planet to its breaking point. White supremacy ideology, which is rampant throughout the world, has diminished the minds of the original people to the point where it has removed us from reflecting God and being the apex of his creation. The chaotic state of the world is the result of the ultimate trophic cascade, which is the fall of man. All the destruction and chaos we see on earth is the fault of man, and it is the result of us failing to properly maintain our duty. However, even in the darkness there is light. We have the power to change our condition. We have the power to empower our neighbors and our community. We have the power to change the world. We are the only ones with the power to do it. A wise man taught us that self-improvement is the basis of community development. In order to change the world, we have to change ourselves. On a daily basis, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to make the world a better place? What would I do of good if I wasn't afraid? We have to move out on faith and not be hindered by doubt. Let's do it. Let's change the world. Thank you for watching.